All right, guys, this is uh, the Predator 212cc engine. If you've seen my other videos on the generator I made, um, I explained in the last one how I made this frame here and bolted it. I guess I didn't tell you all that I bolted it to this little small uh, furniture dolly. I just welded a small frame bolted to that that way i have something i can mount the engine to and i can work on and uh it does overhang the front enough and it's up high enough i can take the side cover off i don't have to take the engine off of here unless i'm ready to uh, mount it or put it away and work on another engine this has almost all of the upgrades the only upgrade it doesn't have is the uh, hopped up uh, uh lifters uh, rocker arms sorry rocker arms and uh, the fancy clear cap or something, you know, it's neat, the cap, especially if you spent, you know, almost $200 for those rocker arms, that clear cap is, uh, would be nice because uh, you, you'd kind of want to see them. And it looks neat. You get to see the, them moving back and forth. And, yeah, it's, it's, it's if I, if, when I get those, I'll definitely get the clear uh, valve cover case right here. So... The upgrades that you do to this engine, you have, are, uh, of course, like I said, the rocker arms, so that's not done. On this engine, let's just talk about this engine. I put the upgraded uh, push rods. They are uh, high carbon, uh, strong push rods. Um, same length as stock. I did uh, your air filter. It's like a K and N air filter. You have to. Um, change the jet and the immersion emulsion tube i have a hard time saying that word um the, the kit will come with it with the jet and the tube uh, pop it out put the new tube in put the new jet in and you're good to go without that you won't get enough fuel the engine might idle but as soon as you try to rev it up it's just not gonna have enough fuel it's gonna shut down um the breather so the whole air filter box is gone breather comes up and uh, i just cable, cable tied it right there to that to the spark plug tip um, do whatever the exhaust I, I did not modify yet because I don't know what it'll be modded uh, mounted to so it just depends you know if I mount it to a, a small uh, mini bike and it work and if the muffler works maybe, maybe I'll leave it maybe I'll go for something that makes it quieter uh, exhaust systems for all engines and intake air systems for all engines are tuned uh, exhaust uh, especially the mufflers you can't just uh, run like a straight empty pipe um, I guess you can but it's not gonna be the best for the engine um, you have a proper muffler that's normally tuned for this engine and you'll get you'll change the power band the way uh, it runs and, and where your power is your peak power and stuff like that I mean it's it's really there's a lot of science into uh, the simple just the muffler the exhaust system it's uh it's pretty neat the uh flywheel you can't see it it's behind there maybe I'm trying you might get to see some chrome it's uh it's full it's a full billet aluminum uh, flywheel it has stronger magnets in it so you have to regap the magneto put it a little bit further away from the flywheel uh if you don't it'll it'll overcharge the uh, magneto and you'll end up burning out your magneto uh, prematurely and you don't want to do that I did leave the kill switch uh, device here as I explained on my last one and I'll tell you here now this works in my opinion like an SCR um, so if the engines running and I go from off you know it's you know it's on it's running and I go off on it doesn't matter as soon as it realizes off this stays negative all the way until all the energy is gone so the engine dies completely um, I left it there because it can tie into it push it bring it up to a push button and be able to just kill the engine with a push button uh, on the uh, either go-kart mini bike or whatever you want to put it on you do see the bolts coming out here right here below that that's was explained in the last one explain it here again when I upgraded the connecting rod on the engine itself, you, you have to upgrade uh, the connecting rod. Um, it goes from the piston to the uh, drive shaft here and uh, connects the piston to the drive shaft. 
Uh, nice billet aluminum um, connecting rod. It does have uh, sleeves, bearing sleeves, and a scoop. Uh, so it, it definitely throws the oil around much better in the engine. And at the hole in the scoop forces the oil into the uh, bearings, the sleeve bearings on there. Really, uh, just that that's the only bad part about this engine. But if you're wanting to make something like this that's going to go fast, then you're going to need to upgrade a majority of it. Um, so when you upgrade that, you have to take out the oil cutoff switch. That's just a float, so it floats. Um, even the guys that don't do the major upgrades will change that. They'll they'll change the the uh, the float. They'll disable it, take either dis disconnect it, leave it. Um, and because what will happen is if you're taking a, a, a sharp turn that the oil may move just for a second the float drops and the engine just turns off and you got to get up start the engine and do all that over again um so i mean it's real basic we like i said we got uh i did notice i have a leak i have a o-ring leak right here on this side from the uh crankshaft so i have a whole nother side and gasket I could probably put that on or you could just order you know that uh, that seal pop it out pop a new one in and, and I must have messed it up whenever I was uh, I had this thing on and off a few times as I was looking and, and learning and doing different things uh, basically what I learned is if you're gonna do this upgrade you really should get all the parts you want and all the parts you need and do it at one time um, you know I took the case on and off multiple times you know so most likely I, you know somewhere in the, there and all that I, I scratched that that little uh, seal and it's leaking oil and uh, it's probably cheap to just get one but I, like I said I have I have another side um, now this one I didn't crank up the last one I do have a video where my generator is running um, this sounds totally different. I really hope that the audio can come through. I'm going to find somewhere to try to set this camera. Let me see. Let me look around. This might work. Let me try this. And I'm going to see if I can start it up. Oh, you're looking at the grass. Let's see if we can start it up and let you hopefully hear it. Let's get it right about here. Let's see. What does this do? That points you down. Give me just a second. Let me get something. Yeah, I don't want to make you just stare at that for a minute. Let me get something to stick underneath this. See if this will work. Lift it up. Let's try that. Let's try this. Let's see here. What do we get? We go right here. Let me look at the video. Ah, you still don't even see it, do you? it'll stay flat looks like it'll stay flat now, I'm not wearing a shirt so you're gonna have to see my fat gut for a minute I'll see if I can get me out of the shot uh, well you're just gonna have to deal with that and you're gonna have to see what it look like sorry about that let's uh let's crank it up and see hopefully you can hear the difference um, I really do I, I don't know how well the audio is gonna do on this let's give it a go so gas is on this is choked back I already warmed it up so it may start with the choke on switch is in the on position see I like it I can put my foot right here See how it just killed it no matter what I turn it back on it's still it's going to stay up because of this part if you take this off and just have the switch on you have to leave it off it's if, if, if it's still spinning and you go off on it'll still keep running um, if you disconnect this 
Um, it's, it's really up to you. I like this because, like I said, you can put a push button up at the front by your handlebars, wherever you want it, and you can just push that button and turn the engine off um, as you need. Let's get a picture of that. Anyway, you can read a little bit of it. You get higher RPMs, and those high RPMs are definitely capable on this engine, but you have to have that flywheel. You, uh, I did upgrade the camshaft. I don't know if I said that. I upgraded the camshaft too. So I have a better camshaft. Gives me a, a, everything gives me more horsepower, more torque. Um, definitely really good. And then if you, you don't, if you only run this off of a uh, pulley, like a centrifugal clutch to a chain, you're gonna be limited on how fast you can go because you don't want to over rev the engine either way you don't want to over rev the engine but if you put this on uh, basically a constant velocity transmission is what they make for these um, with centrifugal force the belts change um, back one will change front one will change um, I'm not sure I think it's just one of them change maybe both um, so that you get faster um, works like a transmission when when you're stuck it's, it's easier for the engine to spin and as it, the engine gets faster it basically shifts you, you won't hear it shift because it's a centrifugal force thing you're not gonna like hear it like a regular transmission there's not a real gear that it's gonna shift into it just changes sizes because of the, the, the spinning and the uh, springs and being able to force itself back away from the springs it's really neat. They're starting to put those in cars. They've, well, I guess about 20 years ago they started doing that, maybe more. Um, those car to cars, you won't you won't feel the transmission shift either. You don't feel it like a normal car where you feel that kind of little bit of shift as you're going. Um, you just you just don't feel it. Let's see, uh, I see oil leaks all over this thing, and I don't know if that's from this. It's probably from this catching here and being thrown everywhere. It's probably probably what it is. That's my, yeah, I'm going to go with that. Um, just to make me feel better. But yeah, it's, I mean, hopefully y'all heard that. It does sound much stronger. It's, it's just uh, it's beautiful. Make sure you shut off your fuel and close your uh, choke. If you're going to store it for the winter, they normally recommend... Um, running the engine shutting off the fuel running it just a little very you know you don't want to idle it but you know you know you want to have some energy kind of rev it up especially when it starts to jerk and not want to run you're emptying this out that is why they give you this so you can drain the bowl but when you drain it there's still a little fuel down here so it's to me you know unless you pull the bowl off which then every time you change the gasket remove a gas yeah you need to change the gasket anytime you open this you need to put a new one on there so it's not the best these you don't know, these paper ones like that you can use that a few times but it's unnecessary i don't even like it like i said because I, I i still have to run the engine anyways so why am i going to do that and a little faster if i'm in a rush maybe i guess but you turn the fuel off have the engine already warmed and and you know tank empty you're going to empty the fuel there's going to be nothing left in here so your tank's empty carburetor's empty and uh there's there is some rules you can find it on, on the internet you basically you're going to put uh take the plug out you'll put oil in it you'll pull you'll put the plug in and you'll pull it up you'll, you're going to get this in the right rotation before you put the oil in a little bit of oil too you're not going to fill the chamber just a little oil pull the piston up and it'll stop right there with the plug in leave it that's good um <clears throat> you can you want to change the oil that's fine some some people say change it so it's not sitting there being nasty some people say you don't have to change it until your next season um if i was going to let it sit for months i would probably change it before i set it set it away that would probably be my opinion i'd feel better with that with like like you know getting the gunk out of there and when you change the oil on on these engines and even your car um it's best to do it hot you, you know the oil is really uh, it, it gets thinner, it, it's hotter, it flows out fast. So especially like in the winter, um, if you're going to get your oil changed and the oil shop is just right across the street, don't just drive over there. You need to drive up and down the road a little while, warm up your engine, get that oil really moving around, 
and uh, then go get your oil changed. I mean, unless, like, you just have no choice. I mean, your oil's low, you don't know how to fill it up, whatever, then, yeah, just just, just go on over there and, and get your oil changed. But um, this was totally fun, so much fun to build this engine and to uh, get everything done. You do have to gap the uh, valves here. Um, and you can get the specs. Uh, from uh, gopowersports.com and all over the internet for what the gap should be um, easy enough to gap uh, I did not see anywhere in the manual that you need to regap it but I would probably at least check it after initial break-in um, maybe I might check it after initial break-in but I know after um, at least the first 25 hours of runtime I'd probably check it and if it was fine, I would leave it and I wouldn't check it. But maybe once every 50 to 100 hours worth of runtime, that's just me personally. You know, maybe check it at, at uh, 50 after that first 25 and, and it's still good. Then, you know, check it at 50 again. If it's still good, then, you know, yeah, wait for 100, 100 hours runtime. And you get the, if you look at my last video, you can see the little guys I get, they wrap around this here. It'll show you your RPMs, it'll show you run time. You can set how many hours you want the engine to run before you actually uh, have to change the oil. It'll flash on the screen, hey, let's change the oil. Um, so then they're, they're not expensive, um, really, those devices. So I've been rambling. It's almost 20 minutes worth of video. Hopefully, uh, you got enough information uh shoot me a message sometimes it takes me a while i'm i'm extremely busy and the way things are right now i got to do a lot of focusing on work but i did want to be able to show you guys this let's see what it looks like and the, you can get the aftermarket fuel tanks too so that you can have a once you mount this where you want you can put a fuel tank up somewhere else and uh, have a bigger fuel tank so that you can actually last longer i mean i, I bet you i bet you that this little tank here once this thing is mounted and actually being under a load and you're driving around, you'll probably run out of fuel pretty pretty quick with that little tank. Um, depending on what you have it mounted to, depending on how heavy the person is that is riding it, and depending on how fast you're going and what you're doing, if you're just cruising around, you know, if you're wide open, which you shouldn't wide open all the time anyways. Um, it's there's there's a lot of real basic engine information that, that is definitely necessary to know um, so you don't ruin your engine breaking them in properly changing the oil definitely breaking it in and changing the oil break it in change the oil as you're breaking it in it's like every i don't remember it's like every three hours i looked at the the man it was nice it comes with a good manual it shows you uh what to do and how to break it in um so there's Max. Hey, Max. What are you doing over there, buddy? I'm running away. Need my neighbor dog. Hey, Max. I see you. We'll end it on Max. How about that? That sounds pretty good. All right. I don't want to end it on his butt. Max! Max! There you are, pretty boy. There you are, you pretty boy. All right. Thank you for watching the video. Y'all have a great day.